station. The most Jews ever murdered in one day since the Holocaust. Let that number sink in. As war breaks out in Israel, leaving thousands of people dead, we get a firsthand look at the terror felt by so many. Plus, legacy of a trailblazer. One thing I liked about Malia Kip, once you watch the documentary film, she talks about how basketball's in her genes. A new documentary features a former Grizz great who became a Big Sky legend for the Native American community. And unveiling a memorial. I thought, well, you, these people cannot be forgotten. They cannot be forgotten. We head to Sheridan, where they remember a 30-year event. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for starting your week with us. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Andrea Lutz. Our top story, Israel's defense minister orders a complete assault on the Gaza Strip, saying the military has retaken control from Hamas. Well, this follows the beginning of the country's war with Hamas after the terror organization delivered a massive attack on civilians. At this hour, the death toll continues to rise, exceeding 1,000 including at least 11 Americans. And the fighting carries on repeated is Israeli airstrikes hitting more than 800 targets in Gaza. Hamas militants killed at least 260 people at a music festival that was on Saturday, taking dozens of hostages. President Joe Biden pledges support for the Israel Defense Forces sending an aircraft carrier to that area. And that war, even being more than 6,000 miles away from Montana, is hitting too close to home for some. It includes two Jewish rabbis with family members still in Israel. Tonight, they give our Haley Monaco a glimpse into the devastation and the pain they're feeling. I'm not a man that's known to be at a loss of words, but the last 36 hours have been, I've, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. Even though violence that erupted Saturday in Israel is more than 6,000 miles away, it's still hard for Montana Rabbi Chaim Brook to watch. We're talking now about over 1,200 Jews slaughtered, brutally raped, children being taken as hostages, beheading of, of Israelis. Now as Brook and Billings Rabbi Shaushkedi watch the horrifying events unfold between the Hamas militant group and Israel, both have to worry about their multiple family members in the country. My mother's entire side of the family all lives in Israel. I have cousins who currently right now are fighting in Gaza. My father and his wife live in Jerusalem. My uncle and aunt live in Zdarot. My uncle one hour ago was looking out his window and watched Israeli soldiers in the building across the street, found, they found two terrorists that have been hiding there since Saturday. As the death toll continues to rise in both Israel and the Gaza Strip, Rabbi Brook shares that this war is causing him to feel many emotions, especially anger. If you want to help Israel and you want to say, I support Israel, and then there's a but, I don't want to hear from you. It's not a time for the but Israel this or Israel that this. Because if Hamas had their way, they kill every Jew in Israel, which would be more than the six million killed in the Holocaust. According to the rabbis, Montana has a constantly growing Jewish population, which they say needs support. We need the love, all the love we can get right now, because in our eyes, if we don't hear from you, it means that you don't care enough or you actually agree with the people that are slaughtering Jews. Reach out to them because most likely they're looking for more comfort and a, and a comforting phone call can be make a big difference. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Some background on Hamas, the Palestinian militant group that launched the attack on Israel this weekend and started this latest conflict. Hamas has ruled the Gaza Strip since 2007 and has vowed to destroy Israel. Since then, Israel has launched four large military campaigns against Gaza and Hamas has developed its own rockets to hit Israeli cities with. Both sides are accused of deliberately targeting civilians. Several countries, including Israel and the U.S., have designated Hamas as a terrorist organization. But Hamas has backing among many Palestinians, who are increasingly fed up with Israel's decades-long military occupation of their land. Hamas is also backed by Middle East leaders, including Iran.
It was all about the sunshine as we take a look at a live shot from Miles City on our Stockman Bank weather cam where temperatures were warming up right now sitting at 75 degrees. Let's move over to the other direction over towards uh, Bozeman. You check it out at the airport there waiting for the Allegiant flight as the temperature sits at 78 degrees. And how about billings for the day? Let's take a quick look at the Almanac because we made it up to 80, just five degrees shy of the record for the date, despite the fact we started off in the 40s. Region we had temperatures that were warming up. Sheridan, you made it up to 81 today, 75 in Mile City, and check out 79 in Livingston. There's been push after push over the years to change Montana's Columbus Day holiday to Indigenous Peoples Day to no avail. But those with the Indigenous Peoples Day of Montana organization say they're making some small steps toward recognition. Montana has 12 tribes and seven tribal reservations, but Marsha Small, co-founder of Indigenous Peoples Day of Montana, says this day is for everyone to honor their ancestral lineage. While other cities and even colleges have recognized Indigenous Peoples Day in Montana instead of Columbus Day, Billings has not been one of them. I, I don't really have any idea why it has existed to this day as such because it's really a misnomer columbus was not a hero you know um people go that's my that's my history and if you don't need no nina santa maria and whatever you know you don't know real history and i'm like because that's only 180 degrees of, of history you can go ahead and doubt it go for it but you should also be open-minded enough to include 100 and the, the 180 degrees other paradigm Small says the goal is to get Indigenous Peoples Day classified as a federal holiday. President Joe Biden initially recognized the observation of Indigenous Peoples Day in 2021 and in 2022. A new Montana documentary called Native Ball will be screened for the public this evening at MSU Billings. And the film shares the story of a woman named Malia Kipp, who was the first tribal member in Montana to earn a Division I basketball scholarship. As Charlie Kleps explains, her impact went far beyond the hardwood, becoming a trailblazer for so many Native American women. The sport of basketball means a lot to Native American culture, and that's especially apparent here in Montana. For Indigenous Peoples Day, that culture will be celebrated here at MSUB with a screening of a brand new documentary called Native Ball. Basketball has always been the main thing. For some, basketball is just a sport, but for Cola Bad Bear and Buddy Windy Boy, it's a way of life. When you pull back my chest, there's basketball pumping, pumping basketball blood. <laughs> a lot of people on the Crow Reservation share the same sentiment. You're representing you know, where you come from, where you grew up. Out in Pryor, there are these outdoor courts, and we would be there probably every night until the sun was going down. That was curfew. Bad Bear, a senior high standout that ended up playing for Montana State, recalls being introduced to the game in Pryor, where she grew up playing with her sisters. Wendy Boy grew up in Lodgegrass, played for MSUB, and now has turned to coaching. He says the sport was an equalizer for him and many others. When I was growing up, it was on the basketball court where, where we were actually you know, considered equals. And while both Windy Boy and Bad Bear are well known in Montana basketball history, neither can say they are the trailblazer that Malia Kipp is. Kipp was the first Native American to receive a full ride Division I scholarship in Montana. And so I'm sure a lot of kids look up to her and see that milestone and see the fact that she did it and accomplished it, set all these stepping stones like they can do it too. My wife Sammy played collegiate basketball probably had the way paved for her by, by Malia and others that came before her. Native Ball chronicles Kip's journey from the Blackfeet Reservation in northern Montana to UM. I'm, I'm happy for Malia that her story is, is getting the attention it deserves. Co-director Megan Harrington says honoring Kip's story and sharing it with the world is an opportunity she's grateful for. Hopefully this film will, will open a dialogue spark a conversation and allow us to kind of understand those differences because they still exist. A trailblazer that was ahead of her time and one inspiring current role models to do the same. I play for something bigger than me and for those little girls and little boys back home and to show them like, you know, you can do it too. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. This week's super senior has put a lot of miles on his running shoes over the years. Herb Mangus has spent more than a half century involved in Billings running community as a participant and as a volunteer. And as I learned, he even set a couple of records at the Big Sky State Games after turning 80 years old. Super Seniors is sponsored by the following partners.
I'm just a walker anymore, yeah. There's an old saying that slow and steady wins the race. A lot of miles over the years, yeah. And while Herb Mangus admits he was never that fast, he has been steady. I enjoy getting out and seeing the friends and visiting, see what's going on in the community, because we, we all come from different walks of life, I guess you'd say. Just And he just keeps going. He's like the Energizer Bunny. He just, he just keeps going. Herb first got involved in the running community with the Yellowstone Rim Runners back in the late 1960s. These days, you can find him volunteering at many of the big runs, including the Montana Women's Run. I've always enjoyed the runners, um, enjoyed the exercise. The exercise and the camaraderie. We don't show up. Herb gives us a phone call. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I push him to do it because it has been so much fun over the years. And well, Herb now limits himself to walking. He does have seven first place finishes to his credit at the Big Sky State Games and owns the current 80 plus record for the 10K and half marathon, which he set a few years back. So you get into the 70s and 75s, there's fewer runners. Yeah, now you get into the 80s, <laughs> why well, uh, there are not very many 80-year-olds left. And Proving once again that slow and steady wins the race. It's good exercise and it's fun. Still got out with the group. Uh, he's an inspiration to all of us. And if you'd like to nominate someone for our Super Senior segment, just go to the Super Seniors category at the top of KTVQ.com. Governor Greg Gianforte is calling for flags in Montana to be lowered to half staff in memory of former Governor Ted Schwinden. Schwinden served as governor from 1981 till 1989 and died Saturday at the age of 98 in Arizona. His son Dory says they don't plan to hold a public service in line with his father's wishes. His family is instead encouraging donations in his honor, supporting organizations that help children. The family says Schwinden will be remembered for getting Montana through a challenging economic time. Still ahead on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, the best of the best. We'll break down the top plays from another exciting weekend on the gridiron. Game changers coming your way in just a bit. And coming up next. I'm Alina Howder. This new memorial commemorates a huge part of Sheridan, Wyoming's history. We'll tell you more coming up.